Hello boys and girls. This week is the follow up to the video I made last week. You know, I explained how to use linear combinations of ReLU activations to obtain the square function in the unit interval and in turn basically all polynomials. Um, so I explained uh, that you can get all the polynomials in ReLU neural networks. And in this video, um, we're not just going to look at the math, we also have a PyTorch implementation. I mean, it's a very short script. I edit it directly to the script from last week. So if you go again to uh, GitHub link below, um, you get the whole script um, that does the computation in various ways. There's a bunch of asserts so that you can be sure that uh, it actually computes these polynomials or the square function. Um, and uh, with that out of the way, uh, let's jump right into it. I, um, as a reminder, I, I drew here in this online paint version some uh, explanatory picture um, to remind you how uh, that uh, that worked last week, how we get from relos and combinations of thereof to polynomials. So, you know, the relo activations are these functions which um, on the real x-axis are zero till uh, the point x equals zero. And then it's just a linear function, right? Uh, f of x is x. So the, the light blue um, curve is here the relo function in the unit interval. And then if you um, put an offset to the relo activation and multiply the slope by minus two, you get this a red line, right? This is just an offset relo with a, a sharper uh, derivative. And then if you add them up, if you add the, the light blue one or turquoise one and red one, then you get the triangle one and the triangle curve and the triangle curve is exactly what um, you need then to get all the all the rest. So uh, I think it was just today uh, there was a comment in the YouTube channel that, um, under the video that it is indeed not really surprising that uh, if you can think of all functions all uh, nice looking functions approximated as you know some small um, cubes and if you stack them together you can get approximation to all functions this is indeed in true and it's e even easier to see if you have sigmoids right we are working with relo activations if you use sigmoid activations then you can really get small uh, bump approximations and then if you add up a bunch of rectangles on on the graph then it's clear that you can, will get eventually good approximations to all functions. Um, so it will also work with triangles in principle here. Um, what we do here is we're getting a little bit more mileage out of it because we get good approximations by basically applying these triangle functions just, just a couple of times, right? So we, we have um, neural networks with like, I don't know, 15 hidden nodes or like 20 hidden nodes and we are already getting extremely good approximations. So because we, we did this iteration stuff and not just, you know, constructing a little triangles and, and, and stacking them together, adding them together, because we are actually like plugging in values into the functions and iterating, we get there much faster. So the, the, um, this is basically just a, uh, basically a selling point that also if you look at the universal approximation theorems, the many uh, theorems, it's not just um, you know, adding up small blocks and then you get there, but it's also uh, giving you um, exact bounds on how uh, quickly you can um, arrive at this data. So usually they, they say, or oh, you can get there with uh, an approximation to this, uh, you know, norm um, precision, depending on the depth of the network, the width of the network. And then it tells you um, that, or oh, you can not do that without the network layer scaling exponentially in size in this direction and that direction. So there's a little bit more to that than just saying it's it's possible to approximate it. Okay, this was just a tangent. Um, but uh, so back to the to the um, to this concept that we had already last uh, week. So you have this blue function. This is the triangle function um, that was also implemented in the video. I have updated the implementation so that it's more usable for the PyTorch implementation as well. Um, if you uh, iterate this function and scale the the, uh, the height of this pyramid appropriately, then after the first iteration on the triangle, you get m more peaks. And if you do that, then you get more and more of these peaks. And then if, if you add them up, right, you, you um, 
you compute all these iterations and you sum all of them together, then you get some, some curves, curves out of it. And then in the end, the promise is then you get to the square function. And we also like empirically val validated this last week. If I jump to the script and, and run it, then um, we get the curve that we already had last week where you can see, let's wait a second. But you can see uh, this uh, procedure in our implementation that we have with um, various different factors of um, scaling down the amplitude of each new contribution. So we have the first a triangle, then we compute um, like the, the function with these two triangles, and then we we, uh, we zoom them, like we, we squeeze them down a little bit, we, we change this, the, the slope and add this new term. And if you do this and, and um, use different uh, approximators in the numerator, then we get different curves. We had this green curve, this was this famous um, fractal and we had the uh, perfect um, uh, cu uh, cubic uh, square quadratic function um, for the factor of four. So uh, this function, this, this bow that you see, this bump, which I called it, is the function x times, uh, open bracket, one minus x. So once you have that and you have a linear function, then you can get the x squared function. And indeed, we are going to do this in this video with a manual and with the PyTorch implementation. Uh, this picture is made after I close this and it looks like this. So here you see the curves, the ground truth values uh, in, in uh, dotted lines. And then you see two implementations. Uh, I mean, the colors are not very good in this. Um, uh, in the video, I, I'm supposed. I think this is a, this is like six iterations, and Jesus Christ, this well, uh, this works well. I, guess, I suppose if we zoom in uh, enough, then eventually, damn, then we will eventually arrive at a, a point where uh, here now we get an offset finally. Uh, where it gets a little bit off, but you can see this is, we are now down to 10 to the minus nine and it's still very nice. So um, this is it, the, the thing that we get out of it. Um, and uh, going back to my explainer, we are going to achieve this, uh, this, this sum that we already computed last time, but this time we are doing it, it in the proper neural network way. The network that we need for this, uh, we, let me, so is uh, one of this form. So you have one input, one output, and then the deeper it is, the better for uh, the accuracy. Uh, but it already works well with like three or four hidden layers. Uh, they are uh, in principle um, densely uh, as like fully connected layers, right? So every uh, node of one layer connects to all uh, nodes of the previous ones. Um, of the next one uh, and also the previous one. Um, and the, the claim is, or the nice thing is that we only need three nodes per hidden layer and the depth controls how accurate the approximation is. And basically what we are going to see is that very roughly speaking, um, one output, like one, uh, like one connection, let's say to the first one, uh, contributes to the contribution from going up uh, the second one contributes to the, um, the ones from going down. Um, and the last one basically collects everything in a sum in the same way that we did this, this uh, um, summing up of iterations last time. So this is like, a, uh, you will see the terms mix up a lot. So this is not like a direct clear um, expl explanation, but th this is the reason basically why we have, we have tr three, right? So you, want to the, you have basically one for the iteration and uh, two for the, for the triangles. And the more you pass forward, the more iterations you do. So this is what happens. And that you, you will also basically see this in the constants in the, in the code. Um, Okay, so um, with that said, um, I have um, I have made uh, some notes. I have added some notes to the description here, uh, explaining um, or giving hints at how to prove, like format formal proof, which I have not done in the last video. Um, how why the, the, the iterated sum indeed gets you to this nice polynomial 
I will not really discuss this here. I have not found uh, like a, a short proof which uh, which I can do like in, in under uh, 10 minutes here. But in principle, you write down the sum and then you find out uh, particularly nice properties that the polynomial that you claim this converges to in the limit has. And then you prove the properties for this infinite sum. And then uh, you basically argue, argue that this works on the rational numbers and then by a Lipschitz condition uh, that the, the sum would actually converge to there. So this is not a proof, this is just a description of the main ingredients. Uh, I have stolen this proof from the book that is also linked in the description if you want to uh, know more uh, of this. Okay, and then, then also I've written down into this text here theorem um, uh, saying um, to what extent generalizations of what we will see here in this video also do hold. Okay, I will not dwell on that. I will discuss the code in the video. Okay, so um, in the code I have uh, implemented, as I already la explained last time, the ReLU function as just the maximum of zero and the input. I have a function which applies this to uh, a whole vector component wise, okay? And then I have re-implemented here for the sake of this video, uh, the triangle function, right? The triangle function is just a function which, where you plug in an X in the interval from zero to one on the real axis, and then it returns the value, the height of the triangle, okay? And I have uh, turned this into a class because I define some constants that are also uh, going to define the weights and biases of the neural network, of the PyTorch network. And okay, the the slope is, uh, I will just use the, um, I will just use a one set of um, uh, uh, parameters here, but um, as I argued la last time already, you know, you, you will have to scale everything up and down correctly before you do the sums. Here in this case, uh, we want to make this triangle with uh, slope two and like uh, for the for the first relo and then uh, the slope of the second relo has to have the same slope but by a factor of minus two right so this is this is again just this picture you go up um, certain factor you know you can think of this as scaled by two so it will go up like this and then the red line must be double aggressively go down so that if you add them together you get the nice actual pyramid um, so th these are the slopes and the offsets are first uh, just uh, zero Right. Um, so because again, the first relo starts here, the second relo starts here at the middle of the pyramid. So this is exactly what I do here. I compute the center of the pyramid. Okay. So this, these are these um, slopes and offsets. And then to compute the value, you uh, plug these slopes and offsets into this function. You have this, um, this linear combination. You apply relo to both um, and yeah, multiply everything correctly. So, uh, in an in a network speak, this would the offset would come from the um, the the bias of the previous layer, and the slopes um, are uh, m the weights added to the to the output. I mean, you will see this in the description anyway. But I mean, I hope this is clear, right? It's just it's a little bit of a sort of this is just the sums of products and relos, right? But I used here some vector notation to um, compute this function. I hope it is not too confusing. The point is just that I want to have these constants because I will re reuse them to define a network. Okay, here was uh, the way in which we got the square function, right? just x mapping to x squared. Um, in uh, in the last video, where the Neumann series is basically a geometric series, but not, not multiply numbers, but iterate functions. Okay. So uh, here's the code from the first video. I call this now run video one, but we are not interested in this in this video. And so the, the main part of the video is now this. This is the, the layers. I define a class of uh, the layers independently of any PyTorch because we will have we will see two functions. One is the straightforward one where I do the forward pass of the neural network manually. Um, and the other one um, uses the whole PyTorch library and then I set the values to an instantiated model and uh, just call the model. Okay, I have a convenience function uh, that just wraps everything in NumPy array. 
Um, with PyTorch, you ha uh, sometimes have to to fight a little bit with the types because there's a like <laughs> confrontation between floats and doubles, even if it's in, Pyth uh, in Python. And um, so if I run this, then actually the script tells me that this is inefficient, blah, blah, blah. You should not uh, combine uh, NumPy and PyTorch in this way, but okay, uh, we're not about speed in this video. Apart from me talking very fast, I, I know I'm sorry. I thought I managed to do it in 15 minutes, but oh well. Okay, so I instantiate a triangle as above, right? The class that I just described. The, the bias are the offsets. I think this is um, sort of uh, natural, right? So you had uh, the inputs to the ReLU was always x minus zero or x minus one half, the middle uh, of the triangle. And since the um, in the definition of how you compute the the intermediate values of a neural networks is applying some matrix to the input uh, S from the previous layer and then uh, add some bias, it makes sense that then th this translates to this this weights if you think about it. Uh, it translates to the offset if you think about it. Okay, um, we have two offsets, right? The relu up and the, the, the relu down. And I said, um, we ha we'll ha add another channel, basically the bottom layer. So again, I argue that essentially uh, the, 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 top lay um, the top channel here, I call this channel, um, uh, corresponds to the, the up uh, slope of the triangle. The second one corresponds to the down and uh, the last one I choose to just uh, summing up uh, the iterated data. Um, and so I have to add to the biases another uh, component which I just set to zero, right? Because the, the bias is a three-dimensional object if the layer um, has three nodes. Uh, similar with the slopes, the slopes are going to basically be the, v, the W functions. Um, and then except in the, in, um, in uh, the, if you think of the weight matrix as this three by three matrix, then the last one where we, we sum uh, up, uh, things up and collect them um, is a little bit special. There's this function where I introduce this suppression factor, right? It collects stuff. Um, and every new iteration um, we add to the previous one with a more and more suppressed, exponentially suppressed amplitude, right? I explained this in the last video. Um, and this is where this comes in. And here we add also in the last components this one, right? The, we have basically a, a bare one in the uh, bottom right of this weight matrix, which uh, keeps on collecting uh, uh, all these summa summons, the, all the terms. Okay. So uh, the the first bias and and um, and weights have lower dimension. The bias from uh, the the okay, I can explain this here again. So we we, we plug in some value x here, right? Um, this value will be multiplied by um, a weight vector, and um, so we uh, initiate initiate it with x here x here and zero here and that's why we um, choose uh, this w in one one zero this is basically a mask um, to not have a value on the bottom channel and there is going to be this bias uh, applied to it here this is this minus one and so this is x in the first and one uh, and x minus one half in the second and zero in the last right after one application and this uh, corresponds to um, the, the inputs here to the triangle, right? So zero uh, offset and one half offset. Uh, this is what happens here. Um, and as, as I said, the, the um, application of the slope and the shifting of the bias is uh, shifted uh, by one because the relu activation per definition uh, it happens when going from one layer to the next um, and you always have to shift the input then apply the, the relu and then um, multiply with the uh, slopes so this is here all a little bit offset but it, it works out okay then comes um, 
all the hidden uh, layer weights, um, the, the offset from um, the triangle function and the, the bias is always the same constant. And these uh, weight matrices are also almost all constant, except here in the bottom left and bottom middle um, row of the matrix, there's the suppression factors in, and the, the sum. And finally, uh, after we're through, there's then one last application of this, this W and you basically just take all components and make an in, in, inner product, a scalar, scalar product and return this. This is the description of the network or this description of the weights. And now we have these two, two implementations where I do exactly that. So here you see, set up the layer weights, I can access then the weights. And this is the manual function where I um, manually um, uh, initialize this x and x minus one half, get the first triangle output, and then I apply, I do this pass forward. Um, if you run a script, you can also look here and see how these, um, this function tend to behave. So here you see, sorry, um, for different inputs, for example, this is the, at the input 0 .0, zero uh, zero one three, like close to the left. Uh, you can then see how this uh, this behaves uh, as you go forward. Often, because um, because of the um, the shifted relo, which ignores everything that is uh, before the starting point of the of the ramp, there is often then here zero values if you scroll down. However, then you get eventually um, to to values where this is not the case anymore. Here on the right are the uh, are some values accumulating, and in the end. Um, you sum everything up and then you get exactly this x times 1 minus x square out of it. Okay. So, and the same function that we have here, now I have also an implementation with PyTorch. Um, it's a little bit longer, but also easy. So again, we, we initialize the weights, uh, these constants in this class. What we do here is we j just do a linear... Um, uh, layer and then in the end we apply this this relu call and the only thing that we have to do is now set the parameters and this is exactly the same uh, play that we had uh, just right above I do this for the starting layer the hidden layers the out layer and then I can pass these layers to uh, this sequential uh, neural network uh, PyTorch function get a model out of it and then I can use this to compute values, right? And here is just some more input-output conversion um, because we're dealing with tensors here, not, not really scalars in the PyTorch case, but uh, nothing too complicated. And thus we get um, the implementation of the the basically squaring function. I have already executed it. There is, um, as in the previous video, a bunch of asserts that compute the outputs of these now three or four ways if you count the reference implementation for ways of uh, computing the square and there's some sharp uh, asserts and indeed if you run it everything is fine and so everything works out as it should okay um, so I hasted a little bit through this video uh, but I hope this is instructive uh, you know what I really hope is that um, it's nice if um, you are interested in that and you can just run the Python script, you can play around with that. I think that's a great way to learn. And so it's, it's nice if somebody did it for you and um, uh, you can, can get quicker, quicker to the experiments that you really want to do. So, okay, I hope this helped. Uh, sorry for being so hasty in this video, but um, apart from swallowing some words, I hope it was worth it. Take care.